Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So this is another lecture of the Strivers A to Z DSA course. And in the previous lectures, we have completed step 1.1. So we'll be starting off with step 1.2. And this is nothing but do all these patterns. So you can see that this page contains all the patterns that you have to do before starting off data structures and algorithms. Now, when I talk about patterns, why are they important in order to start off with DSA? Now, whenever I talk about DSA, Whatever topic, be it dynamic programming, graphs, trees, arrays, binary search, one thing is common in them, that is the loops. If you do not understand loops in depth, if you cannot improvise with loops, then there will be a problem in order to do, like there will be a problem when you do DSA. That is why patterns are so important. Because if you want to master something like loops, you want to understand how loops work, if you know how to play around it, then you can get very, very good at data structures and algorithms. And for loops, you have to do patterns. This is the reason we will be solving a bunch of patterns. Are they asked in interviews? The answer to that is no. I have never seen an interviewer ask a pattern based question until unless it is a TCS interview or something like a service based company. So patterns are not asked in interviews of the top tier companies, but patterns do play a significant role when you are starting off with data structures and algorithms. So let's look at the first pattern. The first pattern is something like this. So if I draw that in our iPad, it is something like this. Now, before moving on to pattern, I'm going to teach you four steps. I'm going to teach you four steps that will help you to print any pattern in the world. Yes. And the first point is, so generally all the patterns that you will be printing will have nested loops. Again, very important to remember, will have nested loops. And most of the pattern, most of the pattern will have two loops. That is the outer loop and that is the inner loop. Okay. Now the outer loop is specifically for the lines. The outer loop is specifically for the lines and the inner loop is specifically for the columns. So I can say these are the rows and these are the columns. So the four rules are based on it. So the first rule states for the outer loop. Yes. For the outer loop, count the number of lines. Count the rows, count the number of lines, whatever you can write. Count the number of lines. And this will determine what your outer loop is going to be. The point number two, what did I say? Pattern means nested loops. Nested means outer and inner. So for the inner loop, for the inner loop, what you have to do is you have to focus on the columns. Focus on the columns. And Connect them and connect them somehow to the rows. That's the rule number two. You have to focus on the columns and connect them somehow to the rows. I'll understand this afterwards. Now, whatever you're printing, print them inside the inner loop. Whatever you're printing, print the, let's say over here, it's a star. The other places can be one, two, can be A, B, C, D. Whatever you're printing, print them inside the inner for loop and i'll show you an example everything will get clarified the fourth one is observe symmetry in case of some patterns observe symmetry so this is an optional one this step is an optional step why because this step will be ap only applicable to certain patterns not to all the patterns so this is an optional step but the first three steps are mandatory. The fourth step is an optional one. We will solve patterns which will be requiring uh, observing symmetry. So let's come to the first pattern. I'll be explaining this in depth. And then the next patterns, we will be moving faster. If we look at this pattern, let's have the first rule. For the outer loop, count the number of lines. So if you see, it is actually doing some task for four times. Right, it is exactly doing the task for four times. So the outer loop will be running for four times, or you can say it will be like i equal to zero, i lesser than four, and i plus plus. Can I say this is what the outer loop will be? So this is going to be your outer loop. Pretty simple and straightforward. This is your outer loop. So I can say I have somehow done the step one, which is printing for the outer loop. Okay, so we have. We are moving for the outer loops. Now the next step comes for the inner loop, focus on the columns. 
for the inner loop focus on the columns and connect them somehow to the rows let's see we have four rows and what is happening at every line at every line what is happening we are printing four stars at every line what is happening we are printing four stars at every line what is happening we are printing four stars so can i say if i try to write it can i say for the zeroth row i'm printing four stars for the first row i'm printing four stars for the second row i'm printing four stars from the third row i'm printing four star like if i take zero based indexing can i say i'm printing four 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 can i connect it somehow to the rows yes the total number of rows were four and at every line we are printing those many stars so can i say the inner loop will be very straightforward and it will be running for j do not take it i okay because i is the outer loop j equal to zero j lesser than four j plus plus can i see this this will be your inner loop so can i say whenever i is zero j will be zero one two three whenever i is one j will be zero one two three can i say whenever i is two j will be zero one two three whenever i is three j will be zero one two three it will be so step number two is also completed because we have connected at every line or whatever at every column whatever is happening to the number of rows somehow i've connected them now since i've connected them what's my next step print whatever you're printing inside the inner for loop you have determined what has to be done now what are you printing stars go ahead and just print those stars that's it now there is a certain thing that you have to keep in mind you print them inside the inner for loop but make sure since everyone is an individual line at every like once you have done everything for the first line you have to actually go to the new line once you have done everything for the next line you have to go to the new line so what you will do is you will just give away a print new line over here if you are using java it will be system dot out dot println if you are using uh, c++ it will be c out and what this will do is now let's do a typical dry run let's see what happens for the first time i is 0 whenever i is 0 what happens j is 0 so j is 0 goes and prints the star right and then comes back j is 1 prints the star comes back j is 2 prints the star comes back j is 3 prints the star once j is 3 and it comes back j becomes 4 and this condition is false and this for loop is done now what happens it goes to c out of endl so that means it goes to the new line when it goes to the new line i is this time 1 and whenever i is 1 it again starts j from it again starts j from 0 and again starts printing j becomes 1 again starts printing j become 2 again starts printing j becomes 3 again starts printing and then the endl happens and it goes to the next line then i becomes 2 again the same thing will ha happen then i becomes 3 again the same thing will happen and eventually i will become 4 and this particular condition will turn out to be false and i can say my entire pattern is printed on the screen quite easy so this was step number 3 do we have uh, do we have to observe symmetry no in this case no symmetrical observation has to be done i'll show you patterns where you have to do it so we'll be super quickly coding this up just a case for loops in c++ and for loops in java are same so it doesn't matter which language i'm coding in you can code it in java as well i'll be leaving the notes link in the description which will also have the java code so if you want the java code or the python code you can just open it up and you can keep it on the side just to check out how everything works okay so we have int main in c++ in java it will be public static void main so imagine imagine i i just write a function which is going to do that task for me which is void print pattern 1 i'll probably print pattern 1 and i see the pattern was something like 0 Four i plus plus, and then I go like i n t j equal to uh, zero, j less than four, j plus plus, and then I go like c out, and this goes like star, and this is where c out endl happens, and in order to execute this pattern, I have to call it from here. Correct. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and run this task. Let's see. 
on running what happens so when i run this you will see this is getting printed but usually you do not do it like four or five what they do is they give you an input so probably imagine i give you an input five so what happens is you take n as the input and this input is passed over here you remember function so you give n over here and if you write n over here now what will happen is based on how many rows you want this pattern will get printed so now again i'll go and run this task so you need five lines it's it gets printed you need seven lines it will get printed so depending on however lines uh, you want you can just give it as an input and this function will make sure this particular pattern is printed now we need to learn about the online compilers so when you go for interviews or whenever you're preparing for placements you will not be coding into main this is something you will not be coding up okay in uh, compilers or in coding rounds what you just need to do is you just need to write this function now, all of these things will be hidden so let's go to an online compiler so this is code studio by coding ninjas which i'll be using for this particular video now this is similar to all the other compilers and you have to use online compilers when you're preparing for coding interviews you just can't code uh, in your local compilers so get used to this as of now so what i'll do is i'll just take this particular piece of code and i'll try to copy this over here and see if it is running fine and i'll try to run it and the moment i run it i see actually wrong and this is where you can actually check out where it is running so they're saying they are giving two three five now you are saying but striver we just had one value now what they are doing is they're probably doing it something like this i'll explain two it's saying the program runs for two times then they're giving something like uh three and five right three and five so what they are saying is basically hey listen this time we'll take test cases our pattern function should run these many times and what they do is they go ahead and probably do it something like this t and i plus plus and inside this inside this they take this particular n and they call the function so basically two times you will have to print patterns first time for three rows the next time for five rows so if you run it in the local compiler see what happens let's run that uh, in the local compiler so the moment sorry my bad so the moment i run that in the local compiler you will see what happens first this got printed next this so this is the meaning of test cases test cases means your program internally is run for multiple cases that they will never run it for one test case in in the real life or in the coding world there will be thousands of test cases any program that you run will be run on any program that you write will be run on thousands of test cases like over here your program is run on two test cases and this is how the back end looks in the back end they will write something into main they will take the test cases and they will call your functions for every other test case and your function has to perform the task for the first time three rows for the next time five rows now you might be thinking okay but i, I was right why was it wrong so if you see they are clearly showing that there has to be a space because if you look at this they won't space so what you can just give is there's a space and once you've given the space you can go ahead and run it again the moment you give a space and run it again you see that it is running fine now you can go ahead and submit this code and you will see that this is giving you a correct answer so from now onwards you should always practice on online coding platforms because when you go for interviews this is where you will have to give your online exams or whatever it is so please start practice so i hope you have understood the test cases stuff and how the backend looks in an online compiler what you have to write you don't have to write the entire code you just have to write the function snippet because the other things uh, they will be taken care of now let's look at the second pattern and let's try to again implement this same number of steps so the second pattern states okay we have one two three four five five rows the first loop is going to be uh dead straightforward so let's uh, do one thing let's quickly uh, copy paste this stuff and yeah let's do it pattern number two and what i'll do is i'll do it print pattern number two i'll probably just yeah so what is the first loop first loop is saying again n rows that is very obvious because we are seeing that it is for one two three four five rows there's something which we are definitely seeing let's look at the step one is done the outer loop is done let's look at the inner loop 
and try to connect it somehow. So if I look at for the zero throw, I'm just printing one star, right? And I say for the zero throw, I'm printing one star. For the first row, I'm printing two stars. For the second row, I'm printing three stars. For the third row, I'm printing four stars. For the fourth row, I'm printing five stars. So can I say, can I say, I have to run it for once for the first line, run it for twice in the second line, run it for thrice in the second line. So can I say, if it is line zero, it runs for, or, or if it is line one, it runs for once. Once, twice, thrice, four, five times. Very simple, isn't it? So can I say, if I write the inner loop as and j equal to zero and j lesser than equal to y. And then inside this, if I give something like c out of star space and over here, I end it. Will this run? This has to run, isn't it? This has to run. So I've, I've given the test cases everything. Will it run? Let's give it a try and see if it is running fine. Let's run this task. So if you see over here, this is, this did not run because why? Because we are calling print one. So we will call print two, my bad. Let's call print two and let's see if it is, if it runs. It did. It's pretty simple, isn't it? When I is zero, it runs from zero to zero. When I is one, it runs from zero to one. When I is two, it runs from zero to two. So we just tried. Yes, the step number two. We just looked at the step number two and it was pretty simple. The step number two clearly stated, connected somehow to the rows. And we were seeing zero row, one row. It was pretty simple. Just run it for zero, one time, two time, three time. And that was very evident to be connected to the outer I loop. And the third step was print them inside the for loop. So the three steps were done and I was easily able to print this particular pattern. Again, let's uh, for the online compiler, let's take this. For the online compiler, let's take this and try to take it over here and try to run it and see if it is running fine. It is. And let's submit this. So if I submit this, uh, this is running fine. Yes, it is. So that was the pattern number two. Now let's go to the next pattern. That's the pattern number three. It's something like uh, one, one, two, one, two, three. Again, step number one. For the outer loop, count the number of lines. One, two, three, four, five. So it has five lines. So the outer loop is going to be very, very straightforward. So let's again take this and copy this for the pattern number three. So this is going to be pattern number three. And the outer loop is going to be pretty straightforward. Zero to N. And yeah, let's take this off. And this is going to be uh, three. So the outer loop is pretty simple. But now let's try to connect the the inner loop like the columns to somehow the rows. Now I know this is row number zero. For the order of simplicity, let's take this as row number one. For the row number one, I'm actually printing from just one. For the row number two, I'm printing one, two. For the row number three, I'm printing one, two, three. For the row number four, I'm printing one, two, three, four. So can I say for every row number, I'm actually printing from one to row number. Can I say for every row, I'm printing from 1 to 1, second row 1 to 2, uh, fourth row 1 to 4, fifth row 1 to 5. Can I say for every row, because I know the outer loop runs for every row. So can I say for every row, and we are taking simplicity like 1, so we will do 1 lesser than, can I say for every row, the columns are going from 1 till the row itself, and then J plus. And what are we printing? We are printing nothing but Let's look at this. What are we printing? One, two, three. That's nothing but the inner loop increment. That's it. Let's go ahead and print J. So if you print J, will it work? It ideally should. Let's quickly run this and see if it is running fine. Run task and compile and run. Let's see. So we are seeing, yeah, it does. It does run fine. So what I'll do is I'll take it to the online compiler, paste it over here and see if it is giving us the correct answer. It is, submit this and it will be giving you the correct answer. So the third pattern is also done. Now let's look at the fourth pattern. <coughs> let's look at the fourth pattern. What difference do you find? It is quite similar to the previous pattern. But the thing is on every row, 
we are printing the row number we are not incrementing it like 1 2 3 can you see we are just printing the row numbers so if i go back to our stuff and do the uh, pattern print of 4 let's copy paste the same thing just uh, yeah let's copy paste the same thing and close this do this pattern 4 and instead of this can i say on every column or on every row i'm just printing the row number in itself and i'll try to now run this and see if it is running fine if i try to run this you will see that Yes, yes, no, it is not. Because why did oh sorry, print four. My bad. Let's do this. Run task and see. Is it running fine? It is. Very simple. You see, one one method and all of them are running absolutely fine. So I'll just go over here and paste it and really try to submit it. Now super confident. So I'll just directly submit it. It is running fine. The pattern number four is done. Now let's talk about the pattern number five. So when I talk about the pattern number five, step one, very simple. For the outer loop, count the number of lines. It's one, two, three, four, five. That's n lines. So without thinking anything, go ahead and copy this and do the pattern number five. Erase this. And let's be like, okay, this is running for five times for sure. The outer loop is done. Let's now analyze for the inner loop. For the inner loop, can I say on the row number one, there are five, it's printing five times. So let's, let's analyze. One prints five times. The first row prints five times. The second row kind of prints four stars. The third row kind of prints three stars. The fourth row kind of prints two stars. The fifth row kind of prints one star. So if I have to somehow, somehow connect them to the rows, can I say, can I say this? The total rows minus the row number plus one is what you're printing on every row. Again, observation, very simple observation. Can I say this? I can. Why? Because if it is one and the total are five, 5 minus 1 plus 1 is 5 is what you're printing here. If it is 2, 5 minus 2 plus 1, this is nothing but 4 is what you're printing. So this is what you are printing. These are the number of stars you're printing. So can I say the inner loop is going to be very simple. J equal to, it could be like 0 and J can go till N minus I plus 1, J plus plus. Again, I'm starting from 1. So my formula is this. If you start from 0, your formula might be something else. What matters is how many times you're running. Okay. See out of star. And then go ahead and see out of endl. I will not be submitting this time on the on online compiler. All the problem links, you will be finding it in the description. Oh, it did not work. Again, print 5. Let's quickly compile this. I'll not be submitting this code on the online compiler anymore. All the problem links, you can find it in the description and you can go ahead and submit them by yourself when you're practicing. So the pattern number five is also done. You see one rule solves almost all the problems. Let's look at this again, pretty similar. It's like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So it's like printing from one to that row number. Instead of this, you have to print the numbers. So it's pretty very easy. I'll just copy paste and it goes like pattern six. Over here, I can do a pattern six. And this time, you can just go ahead from here. And this is like this. And you can be like, okay, J and this should be fine. Let's quickly run this for pattern six. Again, pretty simple. So if we do this, yeah, it does run fine, right? So if you see, by the way, let's for easy understanding, let's do one test case. At least seven. Yeah, that, that should be give. Uh, that should give you an easy understanding. So if I run this, you see everything is running absolutely like this. So this is also done. Now this one is where you have to think a bit. So probably pause the video and think on how you can solve this. So what is the first rule? The first rule is very simple. Count the number of rows. So that's five. First loop is definitely going to be something from like i equal to let's say zero and till uh, five, which is like you can run it till four. So this is something which I know. So if I try to write down the row numbers, 
It's like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is very obvious. What's the second rule? The second rule states for the inner loop, focus on the columns, what is happening, and connect them somehow to the rows. First thing that I'll see is how many columns are there. So can I say it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So can I say in total, in total, there are 9 columns, right? And if I carefully observe, what are we printing? We are kind of printing space, stars, space, 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 stars, space, 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 and stars, space, space, space. So we are printing nothing but space, stars, space. So if you logically think inside it, if we can print space, and if after that we can print stars, and after that, if we can print space, I think our job will be done. Now let's analyze for every row, how many space we have to print, how many stars we have to print, and how many space we have to print. If we are able to do this, I think we will be able to write our inner loops very easily, isn't it? So can I say, for the zeroth, uh, zeroth column, what are we printing? Printing one space, two space, three space, four space. It's like four space, one star, Four space, right? Okay. Can I say over here? It's like one, two, three, three and three. Three, comma, three, comma, three. Can I say over here? It's two, comma, five, comma, two. Okay. Can I say over here? It's one, comma, seven, comma, one. Can I say over here? It's zero, comma, nine, comma. Is it nine? Yeah, it is zero. Can I say? We are printing these many space, these many stars, and these many spaces. Yes, we can. Now, we need to find what's somehow connected somehow to the rows. I think we can. We know how to connect. So if you look at this, this is nothing but going in the reverse direction of the number of rows. The number of rows are from 0 to 4. So it's pretty simple. Can I say the formula for the first space is nothing but n minus i which is, just imagine for the first case, i will be 0. So if n is 5, that are the, those are the 5 rows. 5 minus i minus 1 is what this will be. Very obvious. So I have figured out the space to be this. You can just do some maths and you'll be able to figure it out. Assuming n is 5 over here. So this is very simple. 5 minus 0 minus 1 for the first time. Next time 5 minus 1 minus 1. Next time 5 minus 2 minus 1. So, so on. So, space has been computed. But now we have to think about the stars. How do we compute the stars? Because the stars are like 1, 3, 5. It's somehow increasing. For 0 it is 1. For 1 it is 3. For 4 it is 9. It's something like 1 more than twice. Can I say? It's something like 2 into i plus 1 is what it is. Can I say this? 2 into i plus 1. 2 into 0 plus 1 is 1. 3. 2 into 3 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. So can I say the stars is 2 into i plus 1? I can. So I've kind of figured out the relation. Somehow connected to the rows. Just run the inner loops. The only difference is this time the inner loop will first print the space, then the stars, and then this. So there will be three different inner loops. There will be first this inner loop, then this inner loop, then this inner loop. This one for space, this one for star, and this one for space. Very simple. I just broke down the problem into simpler one. Once I've done this, I think my job will be done. So let's quickly write the pattern number seven, right? Let's write the void print pattern number 7. Let's take n. So I know one thing, I will be starting from 0. Again, I'm doing it in terms of 0 based indexing. You can go ahead and uh, do it whatever base indexing you feel like. One base is. Let's print the space, then the star, and then the space. Okay. So this one will be for j equal to, you know the formula is n minus i. So j is 0 j less than equal to n minus i minus 1 
and then Jay can go as plus plus. Very obvious. Okay, let me just quickly check. Okay, J lesser than because this should be fine. And the similar thing will be at the last as well. And for the stars, it is very obvious that you go from sorry, J. J goes from zero. J goes on till two into I plus one and then J plus plus. Quite easy. This will be space. So you can just go ahead and print it something like this. This will also be space and this will be stars. So go ahead and print the stars. And once everything is printed, you right before moving to the next row, you move on to the next line. So let's go ahead and print the print, uh, pattern number seven. My bad. Let's print the pattern number seven. Let's go to the terminal and run the task and see if it's running fine. So if I run this, you see that this particular pattern is indeed getting printed. So the main task is to break down the problem into yes into parts and then follow the rules that I have taught you. Okay, this one pretty similar. The inverted one. Can you do it in the inverted fashion? I think you can. What is the difference? And this time you start from this will be zero space. This will be one space. This will be two space. So it goes in the opposite way. And the stars are in the opposite fashion as well. So think on this, pause the, uh, pause the video and think on this and let's see if you can do this. So coming back to the pattern, what's the first law? The first law is very simple. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the first loop is going to be super easy to predict. Now we know we are printing space. Then we are printing stars. And then we are again printing space. This is something we know for sure. Now the question is, how many space initially? If you look at this, initially for zero, we are printing zero space and we are printing like nine stars and then zero space. For one, it is something like one space, seven stars, one space. For two, it is like two space and then uh, five and then two. For three, it is like three. This is three and this is three. For four, it is like four. This is one and this is nothing but four. So the space is one is pretty simple it's pretty simple so if i just go back and we know uh, the pattern seven is kind of similar so we'll just copy paste and we'll just take this off and make this pattern something i know for sure is the space one is equivalent to the row if there are is the zero through there will be zero spaces so this won't run this is something which you know for sure the only problem is the stars the formula is going to be super simple. Uh, if n is 5 for 0, it will be like 2n minus 2i plus 1. You can try doing it. And if you apply this formula for the 0 through it, it is going to be like 2 into 5, 10 minus 2 into 0 is 0 plus 1. It's like 10 minus 1, 9. For this one, it will be like 2 into 5, 10 minus 2 into 2, which is 4 plus 1, which is 5. 10 minus 5 is 5. So it's very simple. What I did was in the previous problem, I knew this was nothing but 2i plus 1. And I saw it is reducing. So reduce it from twice of n. It's quite simple. So what I'll do is I'll go over here and I'll say 2n minus 2 into i plus 1. Again, you can do it as, as you prefer. There is, no, there is no hard and fast rule that you have to do it in this way only. You can assign variables, reduce them and do uh, however you wish like. So I'll go and print this. Print a terminal run task clean run. Okay, looks like it is not getting printed in this way. Okay, so it has to be two into n. Now I think you should print run task clean and run. Okay, it does print. So this is how uh, easily we can do the pattern number eight. That's time to do pattern number nine, where the fourth rule will come in. So pause the video. And maybe think how you can do on this. Pattern number 9 looks a combination of 7 and 8, isn't it? So what you can always do is, you can go ahead and combine both of them. So imagine, I say, let's first print print num pattern number 7 according to this particular n and then print pattern number 8. So if I do this, will it run? I logically it should. And you will see it does. So sometimes you have to be smart. It's not necessary that you always write 
patterns. So you can always combine them as well. You can combine two different patterns to generate one as well. So keep that in mind. And that's actually a good way to write patterns combining. So the pattern number nine is completed. Uh, time for the pattern number 10. Again, this looks quite similar to one of the ones that we did, isn't it? But is it a flip pattern? Like this one was a complete flip pattern, like the same lines. If you see this line and if you see this line, they were similar, right? Over here, we have a we have a right angle triangle. But the bottom one is like there are two same lines of equal number of stars. Here there is no. So you cannot merge uh, one like straight like straight triangle, uh, right angle triangle and the inverted right angle triangle. You cannot do that over here. So you can do it with some fluctuations, but I'll still. So let's look at this pattern. So N is given as five. First thing to observe is the rule number four, symmetrical. Now this pattern is a symmetrical pattern. Observe symmetry. Where does it get? This is the this is the point where it starts getting symmetric. So whatever logic you have to write will be okay till here, and then you have to flip the logic. So observe symmetry. You have observed symmetry. That is done. What is the outer loop? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine rows is what you have to run. Nine rows is what you have to run. So can I say if you're running nine rows, it's very obvious to saying you're running two n minus one times. That is what your outer loop runs. So going back to the code, the outer loop is pretty similar, pretty straightforward. Two less than two. Again, you can go one base indexing as well. That is your choice. Done. One less than two n minus one. So this is what the outer loop will be. So let's quickly write this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have written the outer loop. Now let's talk about the inner loop. Now, when I say inner loop, what does it mean? It means this one. For the first time, I'm printing one stars. Second, I'm printing two stars. Third, I'm printing three stars. Fourth, I'm printing four stars. Fifth, I'm printing five stars. Something I'm sure is till here, till the symmetrical portion, the number of stars that I'm printing is definitely equal to the row number. So let's let's say number of stars that you're printing is equal to the row number, which is i. So we can go ahead and say i and j equal to one. J less than equal to stars is what you're printing. So we go ahead and say c out of star. It's actually correct, right? And if you run this, let's see what will happen. We go ahead and try to run this. This will like print, but this will print something like this. Whereas from the row number six, you have to break the symmetry. From the row number six, you have to break the symmetry. Let's try to analyze a formula. For row number six, we need four stars. Seven, we need three. For eight, we need two. For nine, we need one. I think it's pretty evident the formula. The formula is crystal clear. 2n minus i is a formula isn't it those many stars is what you require if you exceed the row if you exceed the fifth row because this is your symmetrical symmetrical position from sixth onwards these are the number of stars is what you will be printing so can i say if the row exceeds the nth row if the row exceeds the nth row then the stars that you will be printing will be nothing but 2 into n minus of the row number right can i say this a row means i over here can i say this i think i can if i go and run run the task will this print this yes it does very simple if i try to write it uh in a much simple like you can you can just write it in other ways as well ternary operators whatever you wish to but this is how you can easily print the nested for loops so we are done with the pattern number 10 as well. Let's look at the pattern number 11. Okay. We have done a similar pattern over here, the right angle triangles. Uh, I hope uh, I don't remember if you call that. So the row numbers are like five. That is quite easy. So going ahead, void print 11, I and T, N, and you can say, I know one thing, I equal to zero i less than n i plus plus this is definitely the outer loop there is no doubt with the outer loop let's look at the inner loop how's the inner loop working can i suppose the zero throw 
starts with one. For the second row, it starts with one. For the third row, it starts with one. Sorry, for the fifth. So it's like, so can I say for the zeroth row, it starts with one. For uh, the second row, it starts with one. For the fourth row, it starts with one. Can I say for all the even rows, for all the even rows, it starts with one. Okay. So I'll be like, what's the start point? Let's keep start as one. And can I say this? If I am at an even row, if I'm at an even row, the start is actually one. Or else the start is actually zero. Can I say this? Maybe you can define this somewhere here and assign it some dummy value if you wish to. So can I say if it's an even row, the start is one else the start is zero. That is something which we know for every column. Now what happens? It prints for one time, two time, three time by flipping, flipping, flipping. One, zero, one. Flip, flip, flip. So can I do this? I think I can. It's very easy. What I'll do is I know how to print the right angle triangle. That's something like this, 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 this. And you just print the start. Isn't it? You just print the start. And post this, you'll print and it'll. But if the start is one, it stays as one. At the next step, it has to be zero. It flips. So you can say flip. And the flip is very easy. You can write start equal to one minus start. This line will flip one to zero and zero to one. You can do maths and you'll find it. Now let's uh, print pattern 11. Yeah, let's try to print it and see if it is running fine. You see, those three or four rules will actually print everything. Uh, did we print it properly? Let's quickly have a check. I should have started from one. Looks like the first line was not printed. Okay, my bad. It should be this. J less than equal to Y. So run task and clean and run. Uh, this will be printing it. One, zero, one. The pattern is printed. Pretty easy, isn't it? Let's look at the pattern 12. Uh, you can probably pause the video and try out the pattern yourself. This pattern looks, so this pattern, uh, so this pattern kind of looks similar to the pattern that we did. Uh, if you remember, yeah, where there was space, stars, space. And over here, can I say it is like number, space, numbers. So if I try to write uh, this pattern, can I say that if I can figure out the way of numbers, space, numbers, I think my job will be done. That's very simple. But for the outer loop, that's very easy. You just figure out how many. Or can I say I will be just running the outer loop for four times. The outer loop is very simple. It runs for four times. The outer loop will be running for four times, right? So if the outer loop is running for four times, let's look at this. For the first row, can I say I'm printing one number, right? And one number. But between that, I'm printing some spaces. Let's count the number of spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six is the number of spaces that I'm printing. Perfect. Let's look at the next one. I'm printing two numbers, two numbers, and let's count the number of spaces. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're printing four spaces. Let's count the next one. Three, three, and the spaces are one, two. Next, four, space, zero, and then four. Something I'm sure is the number and this one are very easy because it's equivalent to the row number. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and first uh, try to write this pattern. And then we can figure out uh, the other one. So I'll take the int n. What I can do is I can just, yeah. So print 12. And I know one thing you can just start from one. Again, you can do zero based indexing. That is your choice. So first is numbers, then is space, and then is numbers. So can I say the numbers are going to be very simple? It can go from one till the i and j plus plus. They could go ahead and say j and this, not this. Yeah, perfect. And similarly, you can just do it in the opposite fashion because if you look at this, it's like three to one. It goes in the opposite fashion. So it's kind of easy. You just go from i to one and you do j minus minus. So this is what you do for the numbers. But 
space is what you have to exactly determine. The next thing that I need to do is I need to figure out a formula for space. Because if I can figure out a formula for space, it can be very easy. So can I say the formula is we start from six and then do you see a change? It reduces by two. It always reduces by two for sure. Right? So if you can somehow figure out the first number and then you can just reduce it by two at every step. I think the job will be done. So can I say the first number? First number is nothing but 2 into whatever is n minus 1. That's the first number. Very simple. Because if n is 4, it's definitely 6. Right? If n was 3, it would have definitely been 2. Oh, sorry, 4. So 2 into n minus 1. And that it, then at every step, you just reduce it by 2. Quite simple. So what I do is, I say, hey, listen. I know the, sp the space initially that you have to give is this. Sorry, uh, my bad. 2 into n minus 1. This is something which we know. So why don't you go ahead and say, okay, please go ahead and print those many spaces. So it's like space. And then you can do J plus plus. And then you can do C out. Perfect. And right after every step, you definitely are going to do an endl. But at the same time, you say space minus equal to 2, which is equal to space equal to space minus 2. And you can go ahead and say print pattern number 12. And over here, you can go to the terminal and say run task and clean and run. So if you clean and run, you actually see that this pattern is getting printed for the fifth one as well. Very easy, isn't it? So with this, we will be wrapping up the pattern number 12 as well. The next pattern is, I think, very easy. You can try it on yourself. So the pattern number 12 is done. Now time for pattern number 13. Again, a right angle triangle, so should not be a big issue. Uh, five rows. So we'll be running it for five times for sure. So let's go ahead and do it for pattern number 13. So void print pattern number 13, I and D N. Everyone knows what's the outer loop going to be. It's going to be something like uh, from, let's see, from one. Yeah, we know, we know it's going to run for n times. Now let's look what's happening. First, it goes like one, then like two, then like three. Something for sure is for the first row, it, uh, we need one. For the second row, we need two elements. For the third row, we need three elements. For the fourth row, we need four elements. For the fifth, uh, fifth row, we need uh, five elements. Something for sure is the out, the inner loop is definitely going to run for the number of row times. If it is first row, one time. If it is second row, two times. If it is third row, three times. That is something which each of us know. But coming back, what am I printing? It's like one, two, three, four. It's a number which starts from one. So I know the printing is going to happen somewhere here. This is where we're going to print something for sure. And this is go where. So we know the number starts from one. So why don't we keep the number which starts from one and we can print it something like this. And at every step it's getting printed. We just increase it by one. Does this work? First time one will come and print. It'll go two. So every time the printing occurs, one, two, three, four. Quite simple. And this is pattern number 13 for you. So if I go ahead and say terminal, run task, and compile and run, this will actually run. It does. And if you want some clarity, probably we can give a space. And if you give a space, this is going to have much more clarity. Yeah. Right. So the pattern number 13 done. Let's look at the pattern number 14. Again, a right angle triangle. So the outer loop is pretty, pretty, pretty. It's going to be till end. So void print pattern number 14, INTN. And this time I'll go zero based indexing. Again, you can go one base, zero based the certain code will change as long as you're printing it it doesn't matter this is something which we will write now let's look at what are they printing it inside at every row they're printing one element two element three element. so number of rows equal to number same as right angle triangle but we are starting with a and we are going till three if it's a third row starting with the a we are going till four if it's the fourth row that is something for sure so can i say we can start with a now, actually, we can run uh, something like character ch equal to a. And we can say ch lesser than or equal to a plus of i. And we can do ch plus plus. Now, a lot of you might not understand this. So, it starts with a and it says a plus i. So, imagine i is something like 2. So it's basically saying, if I take you back to the iPad, it's basically saying, start with a, go till a plus if i is 2. 
a plus 2. What does a plus 2 means? In computer, what happens is a says, okay, two places ahead, b, c. So it's actually c that loops from a till c exactly. If you're saying a plus 0, it loops from a to a. It loops from a to a. And in, in ASCII or in computer, it's stored like a, b, c, d. You can probably Google search about ASCII's and you'll get a better idea. It's just too basic. Uh, so, now if you give C out of character and you say this and you go ahead and say C out of endl. Let's see what happens. And I go over here and I say terminal run compile and run. Will this get printed? Yeah, it does. Because the looping is done on the character this time. So, so the pattern number 14 is completed. Uh, time for the pattern number 15. It's similar to an inverted right uh, angle triangle, which I think we have done in the pattern number five. Yes, we have. So it's, we just have to print like A, B, C, D, E, and then A, B, C, D. The first time it has to be, uh, for the zero throw, it has to be N times, then N minus one times, then N minus two times, then N minus three times, then N minus uh, four times. So it's, it's pretty simple. So what I can do is I, so what I can do is I'll go over here. You know, the outer loop is definitely going to be something like I equal to zero and I lesser than N and I plus plus. And about the inner loop, it's something like character CH, A, CH lesser than equal to. For the first time, if it is zero, if you see, it prints all the five. It's like A plus five times, is it? No, four. Why? Because it's like, if I just write it, it's like A, B, C, D, E is what you're printing. So this is A plus 4. So it has to be A plus 4, not 5. Be careful about this. So it's like, this is N. Next time it will be A, B, C, D. So it's like A plus 3. Got it? It's like A plus whatever N is minus. This is the zero throw. This is the first row. N minus row minus one. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Got it? And do the maths afterwards. So it's like A plus N minus this, this. And then you can do a character plus plus. You can go ahead and do this. And then this. And then you can go ahead and do C out of and L this. Once you've done this, uh, go ahead and print this. And you will see that. This is giving you a correct talk. So with this, we have completed the pattern number 15 as well. Again, the pattern number 16 is a right angle triangle, but this time it's like A, B, B, C, 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 D, 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 and then five E's. Pretty simple. You start with A, and then you go to B, and then you go to C. It's like for the zero throw, the character will be A. For the first row, the character will be B. For the third row, the character will be C. It's like A plus the rowth number, right? Isn't it? Because for the first row, if for the zero throw, it's A. It's something like A plus I. If the first row is just B, it's something like A plus I because A plus 1 will be B. Correct? So again, pretty simple. I'll just go ahead and render write void print 16 int n and then for int i equal to 0, i less than n, i plus plus. And the character that you will be printing will be Definitely A plus I. And how many times in a right angle triangle? I don't need to say it anymore now. Everyone knows this now. C out, CH, and then you go ahead this, and then you go ahead of NL. So once, oh my bad, it's like zero. Okay, once I've done this, you can go ahead and say pattern print 16, and this will get printed. Oh, sorry, I think uh, A did not get printed. Why? Because this. Now it will get. A, B, B, C, 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 triple D, triple E. Done. So, just a second. The pattern number 16 is done. Let's look at the pattern number 17. The pattern number 17 is again similar to, uh, if you remember, I think, yeah, this one, where you have space, star, space. So it's like space, alphabets, 
space but it has some symmetry so you have to observe symmetry and then you have to print it so the outer loop is again very straightforward what be the outer loop obviously zero one two three four the outer loop is going to run for n times the outer loop runs for n times what are these spaces 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 so it's like first you have to figure out spaces then alphabets and then spaces again so if you remember uh, from the pattern number as i said it was this one pattern number seven let's go to pattern number seven and look at the formula so it was like the spaces was n minus i minus one so i can say the spaces is n minus i minus one that is something which we can copy probably let's copy this entire thing and paste it And this will be pattern number 17. So instead of this, we have to somehow figure out the characters. Because as of now, we have printed the spaces, we have printed the rows, but we have to figure out the characters. So if we go to pattern number 7, we know the number of characters are going to be same. That's 2i plus 1. The number of characters are going to be 2 into i plus 1, that's for sure, because this is one character. Because this is one character, this is three characters, this is five characters, which is like two into two plus one. So we know the number of characters are same. Can I say, can I say one thing for sure? If I am having five characters in this row, out of which if I start with character A, what happens? If I have five, if I have five, symmetry, observe symmetry. If you observe symmetry, it breaks at half right it breaks at three so can i say if it has five five by two plus one till this i'll have a plus plus i'll have a plus plus post this i'll have a minus minus isn't it if i start with character a i print it for whenever i am at the first time whenever i'm at the first time i print character a then i do a plus plus whenever i'm at the second time it prints b then i do a plus plus Whenever I'm at the third time, it's C, and then I start doing minus minus so that it becomes B and it gets printed at the fourth. Again, do a minus minus at the fifth, it prints A. So can I just can I just assign a character? I think I can. So what I'll do is I will go and say, hey, can you please assign a character to yourself? I'll be like, okay, let's do it. If you're assigning a character, can you go ahead and you know how many times you have to print that's 2 into i plus 1 that's the number of times you have to print so let's at first print ch and see if it is getting printed uh, correctly or not it's pattern number 17 we'll go ahead and see as of now we, ha we have not decremented it it's printing correctly the space and everything is correct if i do a character plus plus and if i try to run it it will be printed correctly but it's getting increment so i need to decrement it so i know i know what is the break point the break point is this whatever is the number of points it's like two into this is these these are the number of characters by two till here it increases if you carefully observe if you carefully observe it is five five by two is two Till 2 it increases, post 2 you have to decrease so that in the next step it is decreased. So, can I say breakpoint will be this? So, if your character J, your character J, again, uh, probably just to have a better understanding, you can just do it like this one based indexing. If your character J is lesser than or equal to the breakpoint, it's fine, do a character plus plus. If it is not, then do a character minus minus. Quite simple. And now I'll go ahead and say, hey, can you now run it? And see if it is running fine. It is. It is. It is running absolutely fine. So, very simple. You just have to do a bit of mathematics, bit of observation, bit of symmetry, and the four rules. That works. So, we are done with one more pattern. Nice. Let's look at the next pattern. Pattern 18. It's like E, D, E, C, D, E. That starts from E. And then it's like D. And it's like C, D, E. 
then it's like B C D E, then it's like A B C D E. So how do you do it? Probably pause the video and think it because this is interesting. So it's, so it's a right angle triangle, triangle again. So is there, is there a, a doubt, doubt in the outer loop? Hmm. No. no. It's the, it's the inner loop, loop that we have to actually, actually prepare. prepare. So can, so can I, I suppose the zero? zero to, uh, can I suppose the zero? zero it's, it's like we're going, going from, from E. For the, for the first, first, we're actually, we're actually going, going from D to E. D to e. For, the for the second, we're going, going from C to E. Can I, can I say it's, it's very, very easy? easy. We're, we're actually, actually going, going from, from E. Like, like E is definitely the last one. And, and before this, we're going from E minus I, isn't it? Like if we do for one, if we do E minus one, that actually brings you to D. For two, two, if you do E minus, e minus I, I, it brings it to C. Done. Done. Again, Again pretty, pretty simple. simple. So what, so what I'll do is, this is pattern number 18. So I'll go ahead and code void print 18 and EN. And I know the outer loop is this. I know the inner loop will be from character CH will be E minus I. Character will definitely go on till E. Character plus plus. And you can definitely print the character. And going ahead, you can definitely do an and L. So print 18 is what you have to do. And I'll go ahead and run this and see if it is running fine. It does. So I can say one more pattern. Done as well. Let's come to the next pattern, which is pattern number 19. Now, this is again an interesting pattern, but I guess uh, you as of now have an idea how to do it. So if you carefully look at this, we see a symmetry. The symmetry is something uh, like this. This is an upside one and this is the downside one. So let's first solve this one and then we can solve the downside one. Okay, so I'll, I'll just be drawing the symmetry line. So above the yellow line is what we will be solving at first and then we can solve the bottom one as well. So above the yellow line, what are we printing? Let's look at this. We are printing stars, right? We are printing uh, spaces and we are again printing stars. And the outer loop is definitely very obvious. If n is 5, that's the number of times the outer loop will run. Stars, spaces, stars. So that, that is something which you have figured out for the pattern number 16, sorry, 19. So we can go ahead and say i and e n. And we know that this is going to run for n times for sure. So we can be like, first we got to print some stars. Then spaces. Then again stars. Now it's for us to look how many stars, how many spaces and how many stars. So if I look at this, for 0 through, I'm actually printing. 5 stars and 5 stars, which is for 0, I'm printing 5, 5, and 0 spaces. For the first column, we're actually printing 4, 4, and 2. We're printing 4, 4, and 2. For the second column, we're actually printing 3, 3, and 4 spaces, isn't it? For the third, we are printing 2 and six spaces and two for the fourth so zero one two three four for four we are printing one one and one two three four five six seven eight that's easy that is super easy isn't it what is this it's like n minus i so can i say the stars is n minus i number of stars is what i'm printing i am n minus i is the number of stars I'm printing. And can I say for spaces, we can start with 0 and we can keep on upgrading them with plus 2. As simple as that. So I'll go back to the code. And I know for stars, it's something like i and j equal to 1. And we just now figured out n minus i is what we are printing. So go ahead and say star. So we can just go ahead and control c. Stars is done. For spaces, we know uh, initial spaces is nothing but zero. So you can go with the initial spaces and oh, there will be no comment line. INTJ equal to zero and uh, probably J less than any space and J plus plus. And you can go ahead and say for rather C out space. And once everything is done, my bad. Once everything is done, you can just increase the spaces by equal to two. 
and you can do a C out of and L. By the way, initial spaces, what do you have to increase? Perfect. Once you've done this, uh, this is pattern number 19. Let's see if this gets printed. The terminal run task compiler. Let's see. So if you try it, uh, so this will be J by the way, uh, that there was a typo before. If you try to run this, we will actually see that it's getting printed properly. The first thing is printed. Now let's look at the second. And that's again easy. That is again easy. So if I try to again write the star spaces combo, stars, spaces, stars. It's like one star for again we can we can restart it. It's we can just start it from one, two, three, four, five. It's like one star, one star, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces. There'll be six spaces, two stars, two stars, three spaces, four stars. We can just do the second half as well. Second half will one base indexing will be a better way. And then we know the initial space. We can again just initial space equal to eight is what we can keep. And then we can just copy paste this entire stuff because it's symmetrical. And over here, instead of n minus i, this will be exactly i. And this will be minus equal to two because it's reducing by two. I'll go ahead and try to run this and see if it is running fine. You see this pattern. So what I can say is the pattern 19 is also completed. Now it's about the next pattern, which is the pattern 20. So can I see over here? It's again the same pattern. But this time, can you break down into symmetry? You cannot because there is just if I if I carefully show you, there's just one line. Over here, you could because it was exactly symmetrically opposite. But this is not symmetrically. There is just a single line. Had this line been twice, we could have done it accordingly. But no issues. Maybe we can figure out a way and we can do it. Because these are nothing but similar to right angle triangles, isn't it? It's similar to right angle triangles. So we will first have a look. N over here, assume it's fine. It's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Something I know for sure is 2n minus 1 times is what the outer loop will run. 2n minus 1 times is what the outer loop will run. This is something for sure. So if I look at this, we're actually printing like one star. A lot of spaces. How many? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 spaces to start off with. 1 star, 8 space, 1 star. 2 star, 2 star, 6 space. 3 star, 3 star, 4 space. 4 star, 4 star, 2 space. And then 5 star, 0 space, 5 star. And then 4 star, 4 star. So can I say, after, can I say after the 5th row, can I say after the 5th row, there will be a shuttle change. The moment you are at the row 5, or maybe n by 2. The moment you are at the row n by 2, on the next step, there will be a change. And the change is very shuttle. The, sp the space will increase. Till here, it was decreasing. The space was decreasing. But whenever we reach here, the space, the space starts to increase. The space will start to increase. Right? And what happens to the rows? You're just printing 4, then 3. We had done this. Yes, we have done this. If we go ahead, we have done this in the pattern 10. So we'll go ahead and look at the pattern 10. How are we doing it? We were saying the stars will be 2n minus i the moment it crosses the nth guy. Right? So this is what we will do over here as well. The moment it crosses this guy, it's going to be nothing but the number of stars till here it was very simple whatever is the row number that's the star but the moment it crosses it will be 2n minus i again very obvious for the 6 2 into 5 minus 6 that's 4 stars done so i have figured out all the formulas everything now it's time to go and quickly code this up it's like void uh, print 20 int n and i know one thing for sure this is going to run till 
2 into n minus 1 and i plus plus. That's something which we know. Now, what are we printing? Stars at first, spaces, and then stars. Let's print the stars. I know the stars, the number of stars are very simple. The number of stars depends, like it will be rows, but if, if, if the i has crossed the n, then the stars will be, let's row in the sense i, stars will be 2 into n minus the root number. We can just print the stars now. For i and t, j equal to 1, we can go ahead and print those many stars. And we can go ahead and do j plus plus and see out of star. That's it. And over here, you can just copy paste the same thing and you can see this. So this will print all the stars. What about the spaces? You know the spaces, how they increase. So maybe you can keep the spaces initially as, if you remember the initial space was 8. So instead of keeping it as 8, you can say 2n minus 2. I think we did a mistake here by keeping the space as initial space as, okay, it was right, it was 0. This will not be 8. Instead of this, this will be 2 into n minus 2. My bad. I did a mistake there, but uh, nevertheless. So, okay, 2n minus 2 is the initial spaces that we start off with. And then while going, we can do like, j equal to 1 and we need these many spaces so j plus plus and you can just go ahead and say space at the end of the day you can just see out and l and if i is lesser than equal to like lesser than sorry lesser than n then you say spaces will be increased by 2 l spaces will be decreased by 2 this is what you will do to the spaces and this is pattern number 20. So let's go ahead and print this and see if it is running fine or not. Okay, we have an issue. Looks like there was an issue while printing it. Why did it happen? Let's quickly have a look. As I made a mistake, space will be minus two here and this is where the space increases. Okay, let's run it quickly. Let's compile and see. Okay, this time it's perfect. So, so another pattern done. Isn't the pattern printing super easy? So we are done with the pattern number 20. We will start with the pattern number 21. The image is wrong. I'll get it fixed. The correct image is this because you have to print a square. So if you look at the pattern, you're given four. So it's a four size square, square. So for a square, you know the number, the outer loop is very easy. The outer loop is going to print for n types. That is for sure. But if I look at the square, it fills stars. Where does it have stars? Obviously in the boundaries. That is easy. Fill the stars in the boundaries only. Can I say, I'll run for all the time. I'll run for all the times. I'll run for all the times. That means I'll run for four times every time. I'll run for four times every time. I start from something like zero and then I go on till one. I'll run it. And then I'll have a loop. Which again runs from 0 to n. I'll have a loop which runs from 0 to n. So can I say this? That I'll just fill the boundaries. And if I try to, if I try to write the index 6, let's write the index 6. It's very simple. If I try to write down the indexing, it's like 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. So can I say, whenever i is 0, which is this, or whenever i is equal to equal to n minus 1, which is this. Or whenever j is 0. Or whenever j is n minus 1. Can I say these are the cases of the boundaries? These are the cases of the boundaries because whenever i is 0, it runs j runs 0, 1, 2, 3. Whenever i is 1, j runs 0, 1, 2, 3. Whenever i is 2, j runs 0, 1, 2, 3. Whenever i is 3, j runs 0, 1, 2, 3. So can I say these are the cases when we know we have to fill the stars as simple as that so so what are you so what are you waiting for let's go ahead and print this pattern it's like void print 21 i and n and then you say okay i know i have to print these many i and j equal to 0 and then you say hey listen I know if you're this, or you're this, or you are this, 
or you others then only i'll print a star if not then i know you will have a space and over here i can say handle as simple as that and i can say 21 run task let's run and this is This will be space. Uh, now let's run it. Quickly run it and see if it is running fine. Yeah, yes, it's printing a square of the size five. So, so what I can say is I'm done with the pattern number twenty one as well. The last pattern. Finally, my my voice is giving up now. So the first step that I will do is again, it's pretty observation. It will not come to you for the first time, so do not worry if it doesn't comes to your head. So what I'll do is, I know there are seven rows and I know there are seven columns for something like n equal to four. So what I will do is, at first, I will subtract four from every value and I'll get a new matrix. The new matrix will be like zero, 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 and then zero, 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 zero. So once I have subtracted four from everything, like four minus one, this gives you three. Four minus three, this gives you one. So you just subtract four from every value. So let's solve this. And once you get the answer, you again subtract four to get this. Pretty, pretty standard process. So what I've done is I have subtracted n from it, which is nothing but the four, the value to get the new matrix. Okay, once you get this new matrix, you can again subtract the new matrix to get the value. Right? It's it's nothing but like this was the current value, this is the current value, and this is the new matrix. So again, if you just take it to the other side, it will be n minus new matrix equal to current value. Pretty, pretty obvious. Pretty obvious facts. So I need to generate this. Generating this is very easy. Let's understand. So I know in the matrix, it's like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2D matrix, back step 1.1, 1 .1, I've taught you 2D matrix. This is how the indexing goes like. 7 rows, 7 columns. So the outer loop runs for 7 times, the inner loop runs for 7 times. This is something very sure. Because you've got to print 7, 7. How is 7 related to 4? Very, very standard maths. 2 into n minus 1 is how it is related. So if I go back to the code, I know the inner, I know the outer loop, which is 2 into n minus 1. I know, sorry, it will go from 0 to 2 into n minus 1 and i plus b. And I know the inner loop will go from 0 to 2 into n minus 1 and g plus plus. This is something we know for sure. Now let's have some observation. What is this value? Something to observe is, if I take this, the distance is 1, the distance is 2, the distance is 5, the distance is 4. So you take always the always the minimal distance which is 1 and you place it here. Let's take one more example. 3. The distance is 3, 3, 3, 3. So you take the minimal from this portion. When I say this portion, this portion is nothing but the row number 3, the column number 3. And in order to find it, you find the top distance, left distance, right distance, bottom distance. And you take the minimal of it. And once you take the minimal, you actually find this value. This 2 is nothing but the distance from the bottom. This 1 is nothing but the distance from the bottom. The 0 is nothing but the distance from the top. You have to find the distance. And you know how to find the distance. It's very, very simple. So if, it, if I talk, oh uh, my bad. If I talk about this guy, what's this distance? It's nothing but the row number. So can I say the top distance is nothing but the row number i? Can I say the uh, left is nothing but the column number j? Why? Because if I'm talking about this, this 3 is the distance, isn't it? And if I talk about the right, what's right? If I'm standing here, this is the distance. This is like 6. So the last index is definitely 2n minus 1 minus 1 is the last index. Like 7 minus 1. 6 is the last index. And then in order to find the distance, whatever is j. And the bottom, 
Similarly, the last index is 2n minus 1 minus 1 minus i. Why? This distance. If this is the case, you take this 6 and then you minus. So once you have got this, you can actually get all the values. Once you've got all the values, you subtract n and you get your answer. So we know one thing for sure. Uh, the top distance is i. The left distance is the column j. And we know the bottom distance or the right distance is 2 into n minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2, subsequently, minus of the column number j. And we know the bottom distance or the down distance is 2 into n minus 2, that's the last index, minus i. And once you've got this, you know what you have to print? The value. The value will be subtracted by n because previously you also subtracted. And the min of all of these, so min of top down and min of left right, the minimum function only accepts two variables, that's why. And you can do a end l. Is it right? Okay, let's let's go ahead and see if it is running fine. Yeah, it is. It does. Very easy, isn't it? So we have completed 22 and all the patterns are finally completed. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the entire lecture. It took everything out of me. So please consider hitting that like button and to follow our ritual, do comment understood so that I get an idea that you understood everything. If you have any doubts, put it into the comment section. I will be replying back or the community will definitely help you. If you're new to our channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Follow Strivers A to Z DSA course. Share your learnings using the hashtag Strivers A to Z DSA. And uh, yeah, with this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in the next lecture. Till then, bye bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken.